Hey, math students. Today we're going to talk about series. Now, in the last uh, in the last video, we talked about sequences, like the one right above my noggin here. And so, if uh, if I have a sequence like this, and I decide, hey, instead of just having these numbers here, what if I wanted to uh, add them up? Well, now it goes from a sequence to a series, okay? A sequence, a sequence is when you have a string of numbers in a particular order. A series is when you add those terms up, all right? So uh, we have a way of uh, writing this that is a, a little less cumbersome than what I just wrote. So remember we have a sub one plus a sub two plus a sub three plus a sub four. And let's say I wanna add 20 terms, okay? Well, writing it out like that is kind of a pain. So there's a shorthand way of writing it, and that is this. You start with this. This is a capital sigma. It's a Greek letter. We use sigma because it's like S and it stands for sum, okay? So this is gonna be the, the sum of A sub, and I'll use K as my index, as K goes from one to 20. This means this, all right? Like I said, K is my index. Doesn't have to be K. Sometimes we use I, sometimes we use J. Uh, for some reason, I, J, and K are by far the most uh, popular letters to use for the indices. Um, using I sometimes kind of messes with my head because I'm used to I being the square root of negative one, but sometimes it can also be an index. But uh, in this case, the index is k, and here is our lower bound, and here is our upper bound. Okay? Pretty easy. So let's, uh, um, let, let me just show you a, an example. Let's say I had uh, the sum as i, I'll use i this time, goes from 1 to 5, of 3i minus 2. Okay? So, this is going to be... 3 times 1 minus 2, plus 3 times 2 minus 2, plus 3 times 3 minus 2, plus 3 times 4 minus 2. Can you still see that? Barely. Plus 3 times 5 minus 2. Okay. All right, well, 3 times 1 minus 2 is 1. 3 times 2 minus 2 is 6 minus 2, that's 4. Uh, 3 times 3 minus 2, that's 9 minus 2, that's 7. Uh, 3 times 4 minus 2, that's 12 minus 2, that's 10. And 3 times 5 minus 2 is 15 minus 2, which is 13. And this comes out to 5 plus 7 is, 20, is 12, plus 10 is 22, plus 13 is 35. Okay, all fine and good. I just evaluated that sum. However, I want to point out something about this. And that is... I want you to remember two properties. The commutative property of addition, and what that says is when you're adding up numbers, it doesn't matter what order you add them in. You can, order them, you can add them up in whatever order you want to, you'll still get the, the same sum. The other property is the distributive property of multiplication over addition. And that one we use a whole bunch. Anytime you distribute something in front of a set of parentheses, you're using the distributive property. And actually, when you factor something out of a polynomial or out of a, a string of terms, uh, that is also using the distributive property. So uh, let's use it here, and in particular, I want to I want to look at uh, here. Let me give me a marker. Uh, I have three times one plus three times two plus three times three plus three times four plus three times five. So basically, this is three times one plus two plus three plus four plus five. Minus 2, minus 2, minus 2, minus 2, minus 2. Well, that's just minus 2 times 5. Hmm, okay. So basically, this is the same thing as saying uh, 3 times the sum as i goes from 1 to 5 of i minus 2 times 5. Okay, and that's just... 3 times uh, 
3, 6, 10, 15, 15 minus 10, which is 45 minus 10, which is also 35. So either way, I get 35. But you'll notice here I was able to kind of group things in a way that sometimes is going to make it easier. Sometimes it's really not going to help much at all, but a lot of times it will make it easier. And I want to generalize now and just show you a couple of properties. And that is, uh, one is, if you have the sum as i goes from 1 to n of some number a, like we had 2 a second ago, that's just going to be a plus a plus a plus a plus a n times. So that's just going to be a times n. That's one thing. Another thing is, if you have the sum of, let's let i go from 1 to n, of uh, m times a i plus b, well, that's going to be the sum. I can just split these sums apart. Remember what I did last time? I took all the 3 times uh, 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 my, my series, and then I subtracted the 2 times n at the end. So this is going to be the sum of m a i plus, oops, i goes from 1 to n, plus n times b, which is, and now I can factor out that m, m times the sum as i goes from 1 to n of a i plus n times b. This can be very handy sometimes. If you already know this sum, then you can figure out this sum very, very easily. Okay, and the last thing I want to show you is that if you have one sum, uh, i equals 1 to n of a i plus b i, that you can split this into two different sequence, uh, into two different series very easily because of the commutative, commutative property, okay? This is going to equal the sum as i goes from 1 to n of a i plus the sum as i goes from 1 to n of b i. All right? Good properties to know about series. Okay, so last thing I want to teach you about series, and that is this. Let's say I have uh, a sum that goes from, let me write it a little better. I'm not very good at writing sig uh, sigmas. So uh, I'm going to use uh, j this time. j goes from 1 to infinity, what, of 3 times uh, 1 over 10 to the j power. Here, let me put brackets here. Is it possible? Is it possible to add up an infinite number of numbers and still get a finite sum? The answer is why, yes, indeed, you've done it before. Matter of fact, you've done this exact problem before. Look at what this is. When j is 1, this is uh, 3 times 1 tenth, or 3 tenths. When j is 2, this is 3 times 1 one hundredth, or 3 one hundredths. When j is 3, this is going to be 3 over 1,000. Oops, 1,000, there we go, etc. Let's write this as a decimal, or all of these as a decimal. This is just 0.3 plus 0.03 plus 0.003 plus etc. Well, shoot, that's just 0.3333 repeating forever, and we know what that is. That's a third. Oh, yeah. Matter of fact, we could have factored the three out at the very beginning. And that would have given us 3 times 1 tenth plus 1 one hundredth plus 1 one thousandth, etc., which is 3 times 0.1 bar, which is 3 times 1 ninth, which is also 1 third. So you have done this before. Uh, one more example, and then we'll be done. Uh, let's look at this. Uh, we'll use k this time. k goes from 1 to infinity of 1 half to the k power. What is that going to be? Well, it's going to be one half plus one fourth 
plus one eighth plus one sixteenth plus one thirty second plus etc. Well, one easy way to visualize this is a square. Okay, take that square. Here's a half. And then we're going to add a fourth. Well, the fourth is a half of a half, so I'll add this half. And then we're going to add an eighth. I have a fourth here, so an eighth is half of that fourth, so I'll take half of this. And we add a sixteenth. That's half of what I have left. And you can see what's happening as I go on and on and on and on and on and on and on. I'm filling in the entire square. And so what's the entire square? One. So this just equals one. That's one way to look at it. Another way to look at it is to say, let me look at the partial sums, okay? A finite series is also sometimes called a partial sum because it's a part of an infinite series. So if I look at the partial sums, well, one half plus one fourth is three fourths, right? And three fourths plus one eighth is seven eighths. And seven eighths plus one sixteenth is fifteen sixteenths. And fifteen sixteenths plus one thirty second is thirty one over thirty two. And you can see what's happening. Each partial sum is becoming two to the n minus one over two to the n. And if you take uh, the limit as n goes to infinity of two to the n minus one over two to the n, hold it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Sorry, I did that wrong. Two to the n minus one. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Got to get that minus one in the right place. It's not in the, in the uh, uh, exponent. If you take this limit, you get one. And that's really what an infinite sum is, is it's a limit. Okay? That's enough for this video. All right? See you at the next one. Bye-bye.